Okay, here we are in my living room. As you can see, I have Cody running, but that is not the chip computer. This is my Raspberry Pi that I've been running for years on here, powering it off the USB on the TV and in through HDMI. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to hook up the chip computer uh, in the same configuration. So here is the chip computer. I also have a wireless keyboard here, so I'll be able to type once it's booted. And let me go ahead and plug that in. Keyboard down. Got the HDMI board on here, so we're going to be using HDMI this time around. And I'll just go ahead and unplug the power to the Raspberry Pi, plug the HDMI in, and here we go with the USB power. Okay, so nothing happened there. Uh, for right now, I'm just going to try to use the uh, composite cable. Uh, I don't know if there's something you need to set up to use the HDMI board. You would think you would just plug it in. But I plugged it in. 99% sure I had it the right way and nothing came up. Uh, the board did light up, so there was power to the chip computer itself, but absolutely nothing on the screen. So let me go ahead and hook up this cable here and give it a try. So that was a big fat failure. I got nothing on the screen with either of my chip computers, uh, either with the com uh, composite connections or to the HDMI. Googled it real quick and came across the forum here on the uh, Next Thing Company website, and it seems like a lot of people have had this problem with their chip computer. Uh, and this has been going on for months since the first batch shipped. Um, and basically, these chip computers are supposed to come with Debian pre-installed and either the installs didn't go right or they forgot to install them. So basically, nothing's installed on there. And unlike a Raspberry Pi that will at least give you, uh, you know, a rainbow colored thing on the screen when something goes wrong so you know that it's connected, nothing comes out of the output on this when there's uh, nothing installed. Simple solution is just flash. It's something you're going to end up probably doing anyway if you're really going to play with this thing. Uh, so what you do is... And this is a quick overview. I'll go into this in more depth in future videos. Uh, you go to docs.getchip.com, click on chip here, and you have a bunch of instructions here. You can scroll down to the side panel, uh, sidebar here and click uh, flash your chip with another computer. And uh, you have two options here, basically. It tells you a few things you need. Basically, you need a paper clip and a USB cable. And then you can flash it through Chrome or Chromium web browser. Uh, you'll have to change some permissions on your computer and install a plugin to do that. Uh, or there's the SDK way. Uh, my preferred way will probably be the SDK way, but I wanted to get this done quick, so I decided to go with the Chrome uh, install uh, option here. Uh, so you can click on the option here, and um, what you would do next is end up going to flash.getchip.com, okay? So this is where you actually go to Flash. Right here, you can click on um, this. No, that's right where I just was. Go back one. Things we need, instructions. Here we go. Uh, so Web Flash OS specific issues. Uh, come here, and for Linux, what you're going to do is after you install the plugin for Chrome, you're going to have to change some permissions to give your user uh, ability to access that USB uh, serial device. So basically, look over this code, make sure you're okay with running it, run that code in your shell, install the plugin for Chrome or Chromium, then go to flash.getchip.com, uh, pick what you want. You want a fast boot with, uh, the, with no GUI, regular headless, or with GUI. This time around, I went with the full desktop because I'm going to want to test things out with that. Click on that, and right here, it's going to give you very basic instructions with pictures and animations and everything. Basically, you take a paper clip or a jumper cable, uh, jumper cable, jumper wire, uh, and you plug it into two pins, then click Next, hook it to USB, and as soon as you do that, if all is going well, this screen will change ask you if you want to install, you click next, and it flashes your chip for you. Uh, I didn't really time it when I did it, but I want to say it was less than 10 minutes. And then you're good to go. Uh, and then you can hook it back up to the TV. Okay, now that I have my chip computer flash, 
got it hooked back up with the HDMI board uh, to the TV. I put uh, the USB dongle for my keyboard back in here. So let's go ahead and power this up with the USB coming right off the TV and see what we get. Okay, so we get the little uh, chip icon there as it starts to boot and here we go. We got our boot process going. We'll just see how long this takes. Well, there we go. We got our little desktop uh, loading screen. And we've got our desktop. Now, I know this isn't the best shot filming it off a camera like this, but it is up and running. Uh, and so now, uh, two main things we need to do. I need to get connected to the network and also my particular uh, setup here with my keyboard, I don't have a wireless mouse. So I'm running completely off keyboard now. And although you can do pretty much everything with a keyboard, uh, let's make it a little bit easier. And what I'm going to do here, for those of you who aren't familiar with Linux, almost all Linux desktops, if you hit Alt F2, it should bring up a little run screen here. And what I'm going to type in, I'll type in mouse, and I'll hit down arrow. And you can see it brings up a little menu here, and I'm going to go over to, um, tab over to accessibility here, and hit enter. So this is... Uh, my accessibility settings, and I'm going to go over to mouse. So I just hit over right on the keyboard twice, and there's a little checkbox here. And when I check that, it says use mouse emulation. Now I can use the number pad on my keyboard here to move my mouse cursor around. So you see the mouse cursor moving? See it there? It's not the fastest, but I'm using the number pad on my keyboard. So now, even though I don't have a mouse hooked up, I have that hooked up. So next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go up here to the top right, over. So the number is all around the number pad, direct it, and the five button is like clicking. And at this point I go down, I can choose my wireless network, type in my super secret Wi-Fi passphrase, And I am connected to my network. At this point, um, SSH server is already up and running on this device. So I should be able to SSH uh, and get a shell from one of my other computers um, into this. And of course, I have to know the IP address, uh, which you can easily scan your network. Or if I once again hit Alt F2, I can type in terminal, hit down arrow tab over to here and scroll down. I'm going to go into here. I'm going to open up a root shell because I'll probably want to do root things anyway. The default password for both the main user and root is chip, all lowercase, until you change it. And I guess type in if config. I know you can't see things very well shooting with a camera like this, but now that I know my IP address here, uh, which ends in 114 in this case, I can log into this remotely and control it, which will be a little bit easier to do. So we hit a little bump in the road with my chip computers not coming pre-installed in an operating system, which I didn't expect them to do in the beginning, but then they said they were going to. So it would have been nice. I'd rather have them just said, you have to install it, you have to flash it yourself. Like when you get a Raspberry Pi, you got to flash an image over to the SD card. In this case, it was just, I had... I was ready to plug it in. They said there was going to be an operating system on it, and there wasn't. Not a big deal, because again, I'm going to want to flash it. I'm going to mess with this so much the first couple of days, I'm certainly going to screw it up and want to flash it again. Um, but I hope that uh, even though, again, I hate shooting the screen like this, now luckily uh, that I have it hooked to the network, 
I can SSH in and do some videos that way, making it easier for you guys to see what I'm doing. Um, but we're going to run some tests in the next couple videos. We're going to play some video, some audio, and we're also going to try some video games out, Doom and some Nintendo emulators. So, um, yeah, let's go ahead and uh, finish this video up. I hope you enjoyed this. Please visit filmsbychris.com. That's Chris the K. There should be a link in the description. There you can search through all my videos from both this channel and my main channel, which is a software channel. This is a new channel I'm doing for hardware type stuff. Although, you know, next couple of videos, and this is going to be on the software for this hardware, but it's mainly focusing around what this hardware is capable of doing. So I thank you for watching. I hope that uh, you found this useful. Uh, again, especially if you don't have a wireless uh, mouse, hopefully this keyboard setup will work for you until you get your network hooked up. Thanks for watching. As always, have a great day.